This video is a review of the diatomic molecules chapter in the quantum chemistry and spectroscopy playlist. So we start off with the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, where the kinetic energy of our nuclei is going to be zero. Our nuclei are fixed to remain at their locations. So we're solving for the electronic wave function, the wave function of just the electrons, which we can then later combine with the nuclear wave function if we wish, or just look at the electronic wave function by itself. The first model system is H2+, where we have one electron between two hydrogen nuclei. Our basis set here is a 1s orbital from each uh, hydrogen atom, HA and HB. And our energies are two states, one which is bonding and one which is antibonding, which depend on the integrals of our uh, Hamiltonian here, HAA, plus or minus HAB, divided by 1 plus or minus the overlap of those two basis functions, SAB. So it gives those bonding and antibonding orbitals, where we have psi plus or minus equals psi a plus or minus psi b over a normalization constant, giving us either constructive overlap and chemical bonding, or destructive overlap, a nodal plane, and antibonding. We can classify various molecular orbitals by things like their angular momentum, where when we act on them with the LZ or operator, we get an eigenvalue h bar m sub i, and that label gives us the label for things like sigma orbitals, pi orbitals, delta orbitals, etc., based off the eigenvalue. We can also classify them by their inversion symmetry. There's an inversion center in the middle of homonuclear diatomic molecules. So a sigma bonding orbital is going to be sigma g, a sigma antibonding orbital is going to be sigma u, and it represented by a star there showing that it's antibonding, where the inversion operator acting on our wave function is either going to give an eigenvalue of plus or minus 1, plus 1 for gerata and minus 1 for ungerata. The molecular orbitals for H2 then form a diagram where we have the lowest energy orbital, 1 sigma g, doubly occupied, and the next uh, orbital, 1 sigma u star, uh, doubly unoccupied, giving us a ground state configuration of 1 sigma g2. In general, we apply whatever valence atomic orbitals we have to overlap with one another, forming the linear combination of atomic orbitals, molecular orbitals type method. We can, in addition to the overlap of s orbitals head on, we can have the head on overlap of pz orbitals, giving uh, sigma g and sigma u star orbitals or the side-on of px and py overlap, giving us 1 pi u bonding and 1 pi g star antibonding orbitals. This builds up a full molecular orbital diagram for homonuclear diatomics, where something like N2 in the valence shell would have <clears throat> this type of occupation diagram, giving us a full electron, uh, electron diagram for N2 of things like 1 sigma g2, 1 sigma u star 2, etc. Using this type of occupation of our diagram, we can calculate the bond order, where the bond order is 1 half of the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus 1 half of the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals, which would give us 3, or a triple bond for N2. These diatomic molecules can also be represented by term symbols for their distinct electronic states, where we have labels like the multiplicity, and then <clears throat> instead of L, we have this capital lambda, where S, P, and D have been replaced by labels like uh, sigma, pi, and delta. Adding in, on top of that, the total wave function symmetry in terms of gerata or ungerata, we get complete uh, homonuclear diatomic term symbols like singlet delta G or doublet sigma U. Links to each individual video in the on-screen annotations as well as in the description.